Welcome into TechSag's Rewind. We've got a lot of people here in the fake uh, behind the scenes studio. I would like for everyone to introduce themselves. Zoe, you begin. I'm Zoe. I'm Karen. I'm Emily. Sam. Dalton's not going to talk. You guys know him. And the guy in the back, his name is Bio. Bro. <laughs> there's a story behind it. I, I'm not going to tell you the story about my Twitter, but just know there's a story behind it. All right, today on the show, it was fun. We uh, did the go hour. We talked about uh, SEC only playoff. I don't know, guys. That's a report out there. They're talking about it. Is it trolling by Greg Sankey? That was on the show. We also talked uh, to an Auburn insider, Jason Caldwell, on what is expected from Auburn this year. I think they're going to be terrible, but uh, they got Zach Calzada over there. I'm always rooting for Zach to do well. And we also had Jason Jack on the show. He talked about some deep personal stuff you know, that he went through as a four-year-old. Um, going to a mental hospital also by his time at Texas A&M, a bad car accident. is a very deep, deep interview. You certainly want to stay for that one. And, of course, uh, the All-American, Tori Vidalis, talked to us about uh, Joe Evans and what she meant to this program and the future of Aggie softball. All that and more on TechSag's Rewind, which is presented by T-Mobile.com slash Across America to learn how you get more value and coverage through T-Mobile. Watch. SCC on playoffs. All right. So playoffs? There was a, an article yesterday from ESPN. I think it was Adam Rittenberg who talked about the SEC meetings that are coming up in Destin. God, I want to go to Destin. I think it was Thamel. Was it? Th oh, why did I read it? I can't stand that guy's work anymore. I'm looking forward to seeing him in Destin. Yeah, and giving him that laugh that he gave for <laughs> the threat. <laughs> yeah. A lot of these guys, like, you know, we talk about people. We'll probably get back to them. I don't care. As long as they're not, like, super big. Come talk to me. Let's see what happens. I, Let's I, chat. I don't, I don't care. Uh, SEC meetings. So one of the things coming up is um, SEC is considering their own playoffs. Playoffs? I'm <laughs> sorry. It's, go, it's on. go on. Go on. I'll stop. Do you understand the thought process here? Yeah, I think uh, Greg Sankey is just... Uh, he's just throwing things. I think he's trolling everybody else. Saying, all right, we're not going to get it our way. Because we'll do it our way. It's such a big deal among SEC teams to be the national champion, right? Mm -hmm. And they're so proud of all these national championships they've won. And what? If and I think they're saying, look, we're just going to have our own. We're think we're spitballing here, but let's just have an eight-team playoff among SEC teams, and then we will play the the playoff winner for the championship. All right. Well, the rest of the of the uh, conferences isn't going to go for that. They're you don't not, think the Alliance or the Big Ten right, will yeah. be like, well, maybe. Well, maybe the Big Ten and SEC would do it together. But, right. But everybody else has it, and they're going to say, they're going to look at 2014 because that's how far you got to go back to find a, 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 a playoff championship game that did not include an SEC team. And it was Ohio State and Florida State coached by? Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher. No, well, actually, it wasn't. They played Auburn. They had lost right to Oregon. Right. They'd lost to Oregon in the same fight. So it was Oregon and Ohio State, the Ezekiel Elliott year. That's the last time. But that's still what they would say. Look, there's no guarantee that an SEC team is always going to be in the final. Look at 2014. So, therefore, why would we agree to let you guys auto have an automatic pass through your own playoff into the, into the uh, championship? That's like uh, – the Little League World Series, they have the international division and the American division. Right. So there's always a United States team in the final. Always. Always. Well, okay, that, that works for Little League, but in this time, big-time college football, there, even though if you don't do it that way, you have a chance that you're going to have two SEC teams in the final. But I don't think you're going to find any other conferences saying, oh, yeah, we will sign off on that. And therefore, then – the SEC may say, okay, well, we're going to go on our own and we'll just have an SEC champion and that's going to be good enough. And then if you're A&M and you finally win the SEC and you can't play for the national championship that, you were, that you've been angling for for almost 100 years. But what would do better ratings-wise? An SEC champion that to them is a playoff champion versus the rest of the leagues? <sighs> Up until you get to the championship game probably the sec yeah but a championship game i believe even if it's ohio state versus usc or ohio state versus oklahoma state a, 
what they're going to bill as a national championship game, I think is still going to get more ratings than an, a regional SEC championship. So what if it's Clemson against Ohio State? Yeah, if that, but that's why I think you would need another conference to play ball. But I think what you said, the troll job, is what makes this so intriguing because he's saying, look, we can do this. <laughs> we, we can do whatever the heck we want. Yeah, We can do this. And Big Ten, you want to join us? We'll do our own thing and force our, our playoff this way. Crazy offseason, obviously, for Auburn. Um, a, how crazy was it to cover up close? And with everything that happened with Brian Harson and whatnot, just, just kind of take me through that timeline and how it got really low and now kind of – somewhat back to normal yeah I, I think like most everything um it was probably a little bit of an in between not quite as bad as it seemed but uh, you know at, at one point and probably a little worse at other points than it seemed but um honest, quite honestly uh, having like I said 20 plus years at Auburn and 20 plus years of, of being in the southeastern conference you, you kind of get used to things like that uh unfortunately but that's the way it is and um, I, I think in some regards, it, it may have been a good thing um, in the long run um, for everybody involved. Uh, I think sometimes you have to hit a reset button and go, hold on, let's let's take a step back and, and realize what the ultimate goal is here. The ultimate goal is to try to build a program. And I think it took a little bit of that from, you know, from the Harson side of things and from a coaching staff side of things to go, okay, maybe we need to, to, to figure out a little bit more about what life's like in the Southeastern Conference. But also for the folks on the other side going, Look, you, you hire a guy for a reason. You got to go let him go and, and see what happens. So I think in the, in the long run, it, it may be best for both sides that, that it came out and, and you are able to, to kind of flush through it. So then I'll ask you the follow-up. Any chance that he is around a year from now? Because there was a feeling that if he's not done now, he'll be done soon, especially knowing what's ahead for Auburn this year. Yeah, you know, I, 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 again, I, I kind of my stock answer is as well above my pay grade. Um I think it depends on on what the season looks like, and and I don't know that it would matter who it is. We've seen it nowadays in college football. Auburn went six and seven last year. Uh, if you have a couple of a couple of losing seasons in a row, it doesn't matter the situation that happened, but the year before, there's going to be some questions that that are going to be asked because of the money involved and because of the competition level in this league. So, I think for them, it's on you know improvement. Can you take some baby steps moving forward again against a really tough schedule once again? Do you ever or do fans ever replay that Alabama game in their heads again and how different this offseason would feel had they been able to finish the deal there with just a little bit of time left? Yeah, I think I think people, everybody involved, you look at that game every year no matter what. But in that situation, a first-year coach, you know, without your starting quarterback, your, your quarterback's injured and, and you're gutting it out and within inches of, of finding a way to win. Yeah, I think people look at that one and go, man, how different things would have been had you pulled off that upset and, and beat a team that was going to the college football playoffs. And um, it, it, it would have taken a, a lot of the sourness out of a season ended with five straight losses. And, and so it just a couple of plays here, there for this team were the difference in, you know, seven, eight, nine wins. And instead you go six and seven and, and it's obviously a much different off season. Well, I do want to pick one other part of your of your past, and I do want to look ahead too, and how you're you're trying to change lives for these student athletes and, and make sure that they go down the right path. The car accident that you were in, um, uh, there was another part that uh, you talked with Gabe that I, I didn't know much about. Just uh, take us through that event and how it affected you. Which one? I had two accidents. So yeah, there was two accidents. <laughs> there, there was, was one that you don't know how you ended up at a IHOP. I think IHOP, it was the next yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you were supposed to be at practice, I believe. Yeah, it was. If you look back on the tape, I think we played Colorado. Okay. Um, I think Mike Bennett had took my my place that game. Um, and I remember I was in a, I was back in Houston because okay. I was at a barber shop. <laughs> And I remember seeing across the screen, my name came up like starting, starting four, and I was sitting in the barber chair. And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's me." But um, yeah, I had an accident uh, coming back from College Station. Well, coming coming to College Station from Houston one night, uh, went out with my cousin and parted a little bit too hard, and fell asleep at the wheel. So, mm -hmm. um, and don't I don't know anything from that that night. Yeah. Uh, we went out. We went to a club off of 1960 somewhere. Um, I Shelter. Remember, it was something. Okay. I don't know. I remember dropping him, about, dropping him off at home. He's like, you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Next thing I know, um, I'm waking up, and I'm on the, um, the IHOP bench, and my mom is there picking me up. 
I don't, oh, wow. I don't know. Like I, I really didn't, like it was by the grace of God. And I have, I posted pictures on my Facebook a while ago because it, it comes up in memory sometimes. Yeah. But my car was burned to the frame. Oh man! But that's a manifestation of like the lifestyle I live. You know, a, a lot of times you, um, you self medicate. Yeah. And you don't know that you're self medicating. So it was, it was one of those, one of those instances. If an older Jason Jack could talk to the one who graduated early in three years and was going into the NFL, what, what kind of advice would you give him? And I, I'm assuming it's the same kind of advice you were given uh, to the kids that Amplify You. Uh, man, that's, see, that's a hard question. One is I don't know because the Jason Jack that's here only got here because of the Jason Jack in the past, right? Right. Um, but if I saw that Jason Jack, um, that's hard, man. Cause I was at a different place then. Yeah. And, and I know, I understand uh, what I understand a lot about people is you can tell them to your blue in the face, they have to experience it for themselves. But I would just tell them you're going to be okay. I mean, that's what I have to tell them. And you are doing great. Yeah. yeah. So I tell them you're, you're going to be okay. What did she mean to the, you talked about her building it from the ground up. What explain that? Because some people I think just know that she was a very good head coach, but she obviously did so much to make things happen for this program. Yeah. I mean, she came in 26 years ago and I always poke fun at her because I'm like, I'm 26. And so the way I knew that how long she was here was how old I was. And she's always like, Shh, don't tell anybody that. But um, yeah, I mean, for me, I came in, I committed to a and when I was 14 years old. So I committed the day before I got my driver's permit and like putting that in perspective, like, I think it's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life. And, you know, choosing her, I think it goes to show like how well she's able to connect with her players, even at a young age when they don't really know what they want. And she, you know, leads that way for you. And coming into the program, I came in as an 18 year old who thought I knew everything. And she was able to kind of knock me down a little bit and be like, no, you're not everything you're supposed to be yet, but we'll get there. And just the leadership skills that she's allowed us to have and grow into, and not only on the field, but off the field, she has been so incredible to us. Like we would be able to go in her office and talk about anything, you know, whether it be a significant other or our families or school. And actually she's a big part of the reason why I have the job I have today, because, um, I remember my junior year, I was on, I was working with 12th man productions and I asked if I could miss the unofficial visits on Saturdays to work football crew. And she said, Tori, I can't believe you, you feel like you are nervous to ask me this because I know what you've put into this and I know that this is going to be your career. So I want you to go do it. And so from that, I was able to gain experience and do things that I wouldn't have been able to do without her grace. And I got that position and was able to keep moving on and moving up. And I think that just goes to show like, she doesn't just care about your performance. She really does care about you and who you're going to become after this program. That's wonderful. So not only was she setting you up for future in, in softball, but she helped launch your career. I mean, that just speaks to the kind of person that she is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also me being able to come back and call games, it, it can be a little weird, you know, right after you graduate, and then coming immediately back, calling those games for 12th man and, you know, being still pretty close to the program, I wasn't very far removed. So, you know, giving me that inside information that she would give any other ESPN broadcaster or whatever it was, she was just very open and, you know, pushes us forward. And even now, like I have a solid group of friends from my, my team, my teammates, and we always reach out, you know, if we're coming to Aggieland, we're like, Hey coach, we're coming to a game. She's like, Oh, perfect. I'm getting you tickets. Like you'll be in the club. Like make sure you guys come say hi and make sure you uh, say hi to the girls. And you see Becky and Monty Davis at the field. And she just wants the best for us and the program. And I think you can really, really see how much she loves her girls by how much the, the alumni are connected to the program. All right. So we're going to close out with this. So the, every day at the end of the show, we play the Top Gun song. And I know my kids have zero interest in watching Top Gun 2. I asked the younger people here, do you guys care about the new Top Gun? Yes. Never seen it. I've never seen it. Never seen it. Have you seen it? Maverick? You know nothing about Maverick. 
Tom Cruise. Nope. Uh, My roommate got so mad at me yesterday. We literally had a whole argument. And she was like, what, what have you been doing with your life? And I was like, apparently not. Yeah, uh, apparently uh, not. Let me ask the dudes. Yeah. Boys in the back. Let's go. Top Gun 2? Top Gun 2? Yes. Top Gun 2. Let's go see it together. Okay, that's weird. Uh, so here's the deal. I want to watch it. I think it's going to be a disaster. But I do want to watch it because I saw it as a, a kid and I got a flat top because of that movie back in the day. But that's the story for another day. All right, Emily, do you know what you're supposed to do at the end of YouTube videos? I do not. Have you ever watched a YouTube video? No, I have not. You've never watched a YouTube video? Father, you. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean embarrass you. She's like, God. So at the end of YouTube videos, this is great for our audience. Thank you. Uh, and share? Tell your friends about it. Retweet. Comment. 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 Subscribe. And, and here's the thing. I think everybody here should learn people's bios. That's what I think. We'll see you next time.